And so what we're looking at here is, is of course, the thorax on a CT. Again, you may not necessarily immediately look at this and know exactly what's going on, but this is an example of a CTA. So you have contrast that's injected, and then you're following the path of that contrast through the pulmonary arterial circulation. And so that kind of large vessel, the kind of beefier vessel in the middle that splits into two, now you know what you're looking at because by splitting into two, that tells you that's the bifurcation of the pulmonary artery. And so follow the blood as it goes through the heart. You inject an IV, you have IV contrast. Oh my gosh, you guys are, this is amazing. You have the IV contrast goes in. It goes from the venous circulation into the heart and then into the pulmonary artery. Um, and, and what you see in the middle there is this kind of darker, darker area that represents it. The technical term is a filling defect. It should just be a nice, continuous, homogeneous appearance of the contrast as it, as it spreads out into the lungs. But you see this large thing that's sitting right in the middle. It's a defect. It's, it's where the filling isn't happening. And the way that it's situated, it's right there kind of saddling that spot that's splitting of the pulmonary artery. And so this is a great example of what a lot of you guys have already honed in on of a saddle embolism. So think about someone who has uh, a DVT or a clot somewhere that has broken off a large clot that has entered the pulmonary artery and is now blocking both sides. And this is, this is truly, this is bad. Uh, this represents one of the more, this probably the most severe type of PE that someone can develop. Uh, it can be life-threatening, can result in right ventricular failure, um, hypotension, obstructive shock. Uh, and so this needs to be treated quickly and very aggressively with uh, presumably thrombolytics or, or um, uh, thrombectomy. Um, and so if you go to uh, the next slide, I think will give us uh, a little bit more on how to think about a pulmonary embolism. These can be subtle. They may not necessarily give you the super classic kind of presentation, but it's almost like you need to, the more questions you do, the more practice you get with this, the more intuition you get, like something's just not quite right here. This kind of feels like a PE. Before you get to that point, up until that point, you can use things like the Wells criteria to help you develop that, that that clinical acumen, but things in a vignette to look for, acute onset. This is something that broke off and went to the lungs. Shortness of breath, of course, pleuritic chest pain. So other things you can also see, hyperventilation, tachycardia. Mm -hmm. um, tachycardia is the most uh, sensitive finding. So they, they often talk about, we'll, we'll get to the EKG findings, um, the S1Q3T3 abnormality that they always like to talk about with PE. Uh, you almost never actually really see it. It's very specific. That means that if you see it, you probably have a PE, but um, if you don't, it doesn't mean you don't have a PE. Um, tachycardia though is very sensitive. So almost all patients, not almost all, but, but very, very, very often patients who have one are tachycardic. Um, and great, you guys hone right on it. The uh, pleuritic means that you have um, some degree of irritation of that cirrhosal surface that causes a pain on, on inspiration. There are some chest x-ray findings that you can see. They're called Westermark sign. I think it's called Westermark sign. Hampton's hump. Hampton's hump is the one yeah. I see a lot of times on step one. Yeah. And so those are those you can sometimes come across, but the truth is that the, the most common chest x-ray finding is absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And then that um, EKG finding that you see in, in pulmonary embolism, the S1Q3T3, what that means is that you see an S wave in lead one, Remember Q, R, S. So Q is when you go down, R is when you go up, S is when you go down. So after the R wave, you go down, that's the S wave in lead one. Um, and then in lead three, the Q3 refers to a Q wave in lead three, and then an inverted T wave in lead three. So this is again, highly specific, but not sensitive for pulmonary embolism. Yeah, this is very specific in terms of the exam. In real, in real life, S1, Q3, T3 is almost never seen and almost never means anything. So in the ER world, S1, Q3, T3 tends to make us roll our eyes. But uh, on the exam, it's a slam dunk for PE every time.